This segment is the third segment of Module 5B. If you have not completed segments 1 and 2 yet, please exit this presentation now and complete those segments prior to returning to segment 3. At this point, you have completed step 1 of the SLO development process. Let's turn now to step 2. Determine the interval of instruction and identify content. The interval of instruction should match the length of the course. Remember that all SLO scores must be entered into the Electronic Ohio Teacher and Principal Evaluation Systems, or ETPES, by May 10th. So for example, if your course is year long, your interval of instruction might be from September 15th to April 15th to meet the Ohio Revised Code May 1st timeline for teacher evaluation. This time frame would leave you with two weeks to administer your post-assessment, complete the SLO scoring template, organize your data and evidence, and meet with your evaluator to discuss scoring. You might include different dates as long as the interval of instruction matches the course, aligns with the district evaluation timelines, and ends prior to May 1st. Take a moment now to think about your course and articulate the interval of instruction for your SLO. Look at the SLO template checklist to ensure you meet each criterion for this component. Even though it is not required, you also may consider adding additional information in this section if there are factors that could impact student growth. For instance, knowing that the class meets daily and how long the typical class period lasts could be beneficial for the committee. You may pause this recording while you complete this section of the SLO and then click play when you are finished. In this second part of step two, you will need to identify the content of the SLO. As a reminder, the content of the SLO should be aligned to the highest ranking of the course standards that apply. If neither Common Core State Standards nor Ohio Standards apply to your course, please use national standards put forth by national education organizations. Once you have determined which standards you need to use, you will want to review the standards and determine those that are most important. By most important, we mean the standards that represent essential learning or enduring skills that students will need to master to be successful in later courses. These are the big ideas and skills that you will emphasize in your course. For some, selecting the most important standards will be challenging, which is why ODE highly encourages that you discuss your course standards with your colleagues, such as in a professional learning committee, grade level team, or department team. In addition, if teachers determine the most important standards as a group, this can increase comparability across teachers because SLOs will target the same or similar standards. We are often asked how many standards teachers should include in an SLO. This number will vary by course and subject area. So again, deciding as a group the most important standards can be very helpful. If you have not already reviewed your course standards, please do so now. Stop the recording and return to this module when you are ready to proceed. At this point, you should have reviewed your course standards and have determined which standards are most important. Again, it is encouraged that you collaborate with your colleagues to determine which standards the SLO will target. If all teachers in the same subject or grade target the same or similar standards, SLOs will be more comparable across teachers. Because you are creating a class or course level SLO, you can now complete the standards and content component of the SLO template. If you were creating a targeted SLO, you would want to further break down the standards to find those where a specific subgroup of students most needs assistance or possible enrichment. In this component, you will need to do four things. Specify which standards your SLO will emphasize. You can list them. Summarize the information contained in the standards. Because reviewers may not be as familiar with the standards as you are, it is important to summarize the information contained within the standards. In addition, this summary gives you the opportunity to demonstrate in-depth understanding of the standards that apply to your course or subject. Explain how these standards represent the big ideas of the course. And explain why the standards you selected are most important. In other words, why do these standards matter? Why is it important that your students leave your classroom knowing this information or skill? Now, please turn to your SLO template and get ready to complete the standards and content component. When writing this part of the SLO, 
Please look at the SLO template checklist to ensure you meet each criterion for this component. Note that the third bullet applies only to targeted SLOs and thus does not need to be addressed in this SLO. To ensure your approval committee understands this box does not apply to your SLO, you should explicitly state that this is not a targeted SLO. Please pause now and complete the standards and content component and then press play when you are ready to resume. This concludes segment three. The next segment will focus on the third step of the SLO development process, choose assessments and set the growth target. When you are ready to proceed with module 5b, please open segment four.